Hi, I am back with volume one of Captivating Kitty Cats. This is a book that Cheryl sent me, Grayscale. And if you were with me last time, we worked on, where is that page? We worked on this kitty. And we did a lot on the fur and the nose and stuff. So if you missed that, go back and catch it. What I want to work on today is just this eye. So I have already looked at my swatches. I am using my Marco Rabin's. And um, I've got a pencil eraser handy. I've got a sharpener handy. I will tell you, when you sharpen your pencils, the best way that I have found to do it, and I've watched a lot of tutorials, hold your pencil in your dominant hand and rotate and I can't do it this far out from where I am, but rotate with your dominant hand, hold your pencil in your non-dominant hand. I have to get off screen to do this because I'm just not coordinated enough to reach out as far as I am to do these. But um, yeah, it doesn't take much. And if you find that your pencil sharpener is getting dull, that maybe it's only one or two that you have that actually have the um, the holder with it. You can actually take these apart, get a little eyeglass screwdriver in there and replace the blades. I've got this blade, the Dollar Tree. It was a nine pack for a buck. And um, yeah, I've, I've had awesome luck with it. So... All right, I'm going to put these from light to dark, and I am using 551, and then I'll be using 544. Then I'm going to go into my browns, 553, and 558. Again, if you have my conversion charts, I know at least two of those are um, in those charts. And I'm just looking real quick. Yeah, we go from greens to browns. I don't have a cat. Um, Husby's, hubby's allergies keep us from doing that. So I actually had to look online to be able to see um, what color cat's eyes are and stuff. So anyway, I'm going to start with my darkest, and you can see there's a lot of dark, like right here and right here. There are a lot of little ins and outs and nooks and crannies when you're doing cat's eyes, so make sure you get all that in there. And this is a nice close-up. Now, this part right here is not necessarily the real color of the cat's eye as much as it is the shadow from where their brow overhangs that eye. Does that make sense? So that was 558. Now I'm going to go down into 553. And the amount of pressure you put on here is going to um, dictate how easily it blends. So I get lighter as I come to the outside of an area, but I can go ahead and go a little darker if I'm up in the top area. Does that make sense? So as I'm coming down right here, I'm gonna get lighter because I want that next shade to blend in with it, okay? And I know some of you are like, oh, get closer, I can't see. Only problem is if I get closer, my camera will zoom in on my hand instead of the book. And we're gonna try it. But I'm telling you, I don't know how well it's going to work. Okay. Whoa, not that far zoomed. Let's see, where did the eye even go? There it is. Okay, so we're going to see if it'll stay focused. All right. We'll see. We'll try. If so, then maybe my camera is finally understanding how I work. All right, so these back in the right order. This is some of the dark and then the reflection. So I'm going to go right up to that. 
and I'm using the 553 for this. And I'm just going over the top of some of those other colors. All right. This really gets in there where you can see. Now see where I got right there a little too much? I can come in with my eraser and I don't even have to turn that on. I can just get that one little area. Now if I turn it on, it's going to get it quicker. Hold your ears. Okay, that wasn't too bad. There you go. All right, and then I can come back in and just touch up what I accidentally erased that should have been darker. Okay, so that's my darkest. This is darkest. This is darkest up in here. All right, then here's my next shade. This was the 553 blending. I'm holding further back on my pencil because I am heavy handed. And I know that, oh, and there's a line there, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. Um, given to my own devices, this eye would be just so dark. Now, here's some dark in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And there's some right here. But again, all of this part of the eye is overlapping that. So that's why those areas are a little bit darker. Okay, now I'm going to go into my next color, which is my 544. And I'm going to come down in here. This is where we start doing the actual color of the eye. So I'm overlapping, and I'm going around the outer edge and overlapping the color that was before, just lightly. Okay, this cat has green, greenish brown, almost like a hazel eye. I'm doing lightly here. The reason I'm going ahead and doing all of this, even though I'm going super light right here and you can barely see it, is because I know that my next color is going to be really light. Okay, this is 551. And now I'm going to blend everything. I'm just going to use this color. I think I'm going to use it on the entire eye. How's that sound? I'm just blending away. Circles and just blending away. What this does is takes that color and uh, lends a uniformity to the entire eye. I'm just blending over and over, trying to get rid of all that tooth that's in the paper and all that gray that's poking through. Okay? Now, when you look at that up close, it almost looks like some big hot mess. Okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to zoom back out. Don't get sick. I'm going to move you. Can you see how different that looks? So a lot of times when I'm doing a painting class, I tell my students, remember, nobody's going to be right up on top of that. So if it looks a little different, don't worry about it. Okay? But there's, um, there's the eye. So if you decided that you wanted that just a little bit darker in the darkest areas, there I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> then you could come back in and still go over it. So this is 558. I can come back in here and still deepen this up. I can deepen this up as much as I want. I've got to remember to get lighter as I come into the other colors. But I can be darker up in here and it's fine. Okay, I can be darker through here it's just that as you get to where you're overlapping your colors, you want a soft touch. Imagine if you went up and touched um, a baby's face, a baby kitty. Um, you would use a softer touch. That's what you're using here. Okay, I'm going to go back into the 553. All I'm doing is adding another layer of color to intensify this. 
and to get rid of some more of the gray and white that's poking through. Okay, that's all I'm doing here. And then I'm going to use that darkest, the 544, the darkest green, and I'm going to intensify the color of the eye down here because it kind of got lost down at the base. But can you see how this already looks different than what we had before? Just by me coming back over some of those areas, it really intensifies that cat's eye. So don't be afraid to color um, over something two or three times. Don't be afraid to overlap your colors. I'm going to go to that 551 and um, just overlap them, play with them. I have certain books that are my favorites. Um, I've been working through the fairy tale books and I really save those for my polychromos and other pencils that I can manipulate better. But still layering, it's just good practice. Now, the center of that eye was black. I can actually come in with a black pen, and this is blue, so we're not going to use that. We're going to come in with our black pencil, and I think this is the black. 570 yeah Ooh, sloppy sloppy all right so I'm gonna come in here then and I'm just gonna put this right back in because I lost part of it when I was coloring so when you're doing grayscale don't be afraid to come in and put black back over the top see even this I can go in black around the edge of this eye come into it a little bit if I want just makes it a little more dramatic. Just as long as when I'm coming out, I get a lighter touch because I'm eventually going to blend that in with whatever color fur I end up putting on this kitty. All right. Same thing here. I can go just over the edge with the black, but then I need to blend very soft touch going out so that whatever color I put up in there is going to be able to blend easily. But yeah, um, have fun with the page. See, just by adding a line right here, it gets a little more dramatic. Okay, I can add a line on this side. It's not there, but I can add it. And now that light that's there is even more dramatic than it was before. I went in a little further than I had planned. So anytime you do that, just use your eraser. It's no big deal. No coloring police. All right. So now then when we zoom back out. Oops, wrong way. Come on, camera. Work with me. There we go. As we zoom back out, there's the kitty's eye. So this is just working on the cat's eye. And um, hope this helps somebody along the way with doing animals. Just layer after layer after layer. Um, three to four layers on anything, whether it's grayscale or not, is good practice. At least two. Um, two layers is just going to add depth, okay? And again, if you missed the other um, cat picture that I had done, let's see if we can find it right here. Yeah, I never did finish. I'm, I have a bad habit of not finishing. I will start things with you, and then they end up going by the way. Okay? But this is also on a video somewhere, and I show you how to do all the layering and to skip around so that you don't get those same colors over and over. All right? But anyway, this is what we did today. Hope you enjoyed, and um, I will talk to you all later. Bye.